Transformative is a series of short films that try and explain the history of fashion photography as seen from the perspective of the stylist, the makeup artist and the hairdresser. So Eugene, yes, welcome Steve. to Transformative. Thank you. Um, this is very nice to have you, very nice to interview you. Um, so this is a series that we talk about generally the history of fashion photography, but we talk about it through talking not to photographers, but to makeup artists, hairdressers, stylists, so on. Um, so we should perhaps put a little bit of context to where we are today. Uh, we just finished a two-day shoot with... Bjork. It was fantastic. Amazing. Um, as she always is. Um, but it is now sort of half past ten at night. So we'll, we'll do our best. We will. But let's start, um, let's start it right at the beginning. So tell me a little bit about where you come from, who you are, um, just up to the point where you get into fashion. I just need to know a little bit of history um, to situate you. Basically, I'm an art school dropout. Right. Yeah, before that I was in a band and uh, didn't really go into art school. Uh, right. Stuck with the band because that was way cooler. Yeah. Uh, band fell apart, art school fell apart because I didn't really go. Uh, <laughs> so I went to a careers uh, advice centre right. and I filled out this um, 100, que 100 question um, multiple choice form yeah. and the lady said, you'd be a really good hairdresser. Which you could just and tell. I just said, what? <laughs> She's like, you'd be a really good hairdresser. Uh, she's like, you're lively, you know, you look really interesting, uh, you're engaging, you listen well, I can see you process stuff, you're, uh, you're, you're intelligent, and, uh, and you're really great with your hands, so I think that would be a really good profession for you. And I was a bit shocked, I was a bit like, really? Quite insightful of a career officer. I was like, wow, I uh, wasn't really expecting that, well. you know. Um, so she said, you know, you can get a job in a salon or you can go to college. I was like, I don't want to work, go to college. And I was um, basically the only boy with about 120 girls and I just loved it. Literally right. from the moment I yeah. stepped through the door, just loved every part of it, loved doing hair, loved the environment. Um, I was learning, it was, it was just brilliant. How long were you at college? Three years. Right. City of Guilds. Right, excellent. And whereabouts? Erith, in Kent. Really? Oh, okay. I never knew. Um, okay, so tell me, you're, you spent three years at City Girls. What, what date are we talking? Um, it would probably be about 70, 79 right, okay. to 81. Right. And then I worked in a barber shop right. after I uh, got my City and Guilds for about six months, and the manager has said, What the what are you doing here you got to look at you she just don't fit in she's like you need to work for a, a hairdresser called trevor Solby. yeah and i went in there got my hair cut and i was quite cheeky in those days still am actually uh, yeah and uh I, I asked him for a job he said sure come for an interview went for an interview uh what do you want to do i said i'd like your job <laughs> he went i like you you're really cheeky <laughs> you've got a you've got a you know uh an interview, uh, present us some models, and, and we'll take it from there. Right. So I got in basically. Right. And so when we talk about because it, it probably would have been about eighty, about eighty three. So how long did you work for Trevor Solby? 12, 12, 15 years. Wow. So you got a real training in salon hairdressing. Got proper training. I used to oh. be a teacher. Right. I used to do um, seminar work uh, and a lot of trade shows. Okay. All right. Well, that brings us on to the first picture I want to show you. Right. <laughs> so you think you can guess the person we're going to be talking about. Ooh, I hope you're dragging out something nice, Nick. It's a good way of getting into the person for me. So, tell me a little bit about this, you do. Ah! Um, this was a shoot I did with Craig Mathine. Uh -huh. Obviously, um, someone that uh, has been, I guess... Uh, just put me on the map, really. Yeah. Tell me, what's out of all the years you worked with Craig, including the years you were very, very close to him, what was the best story you did? Do you think? What was the most? You think? What, where did you push the image most? Which story do you think? Oh you know, my God! That's uh, image-wise, that's the strongest thing I've done, or the strongest thing I've seen, or what were you very proud of? To be really honest with you, there's a lot that I've been very yeah. proud of with Craig. Um, yeah, what comes to I mind? think what really springs to mind for me is probably uh, Jill Sander Guinevere. Right, yeah. For me, um, 
because I kind of fell in love with her. Yeah. I just thought she was just like probably the most beautiful, the most exquisite yeah. woman I'd ever yeah. seen at that point in time. Yeah. Uh, and I could not believe, right, we were getting flown business yeah. to to another place and staying in a really nice hotel. Yeah. <laughs> like I literally couldn't believe it. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm going to be all right at this session yeah. stuff, you know. And uh, And it literally felt like we kind of done so much kind of like work that we love doing for like ID in the face, you know, um, that it was kind of paying off. People were actually like looking at yeah. what we were doing, yeah. which was quite strange. This is a session where the sort of the wallpaper cuts in half. Is that the one we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. That was with Mark Ascoli as art director. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. That was a great education. Yeah, yeah, I've could imagine. And that. you know, I and I well, totally, yeah. I, I, I learned so much from it. Uh, you know, I, I had no idea that you could intellectualise hair. <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh, wow, is this, this is like poetry coming out of his mouth, yeah. and and it actually made sense. Yeah. Uh, and I think I probably would have felt it would probably be quite pretentious if I wasn't yeah. in that environment. I yeah. just could not believe someone was talking about clothes and image and hair and makeup and yeah. girl or type of girl because yeah. I just thought oh it's about a hairstyle yeah. I didn't realize that there was this whole other yeah. world that informed you yeah. uh, you know and uh, and I learned so much yeah. well so actually, much. just say for the audience who, who might not know Mark Ascoli was, genius. was a genius or is a genius um, is a French art director who worked uh, very crucially with Yoji Yamamoto yeah. in the 80s and early 90s, and also then with Jill Sander, Martin mm -hmm. Sidbon, um, Hugo Boss, and lots of other different big Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, I, th I think he was like really amazing, and I think um, we were really lucky to be kind of nurtured by him. Yeah. Because I think in some kind of, well, not in some way, he kind of educated us, yeah. really, and, and we, we learned a lot from him, and we really enjoyed the process. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, because he, he's a chap that I think gave me my fashion education, if you want. Yeah, for sure. Because I worked with him for probably five years, mm -hmm. most intensively, um, in the late, mid to late 80s. Um, and he taught me everything I knew about fashion. I, mean, I knew a little bit more or less about London the street stories. fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, totally. but, you know, educating me about Avedon and about um, Scaparelli and, you know, it was a whole mm -hmm. different range of things. Uh, so I know exactly you know, what you would have gone through, mm -hmm. or roughly what you would have gone through with him too. Tell, tell us a bit about meeting Craig, because... That's for me is a very Well, I actually used to work, uh, it's still a lot of um, pop work when I started doing session hairdressing. In fact, when I, was, when I met Craig, I was still working in a salon. Yeah. Uh, teaching. Um, and I just used to do like editorial shoots of the weekend yeah. with like Glenn Lutchford, uh, Corinne Day. Yeah. Uh, and I went into, there was a printer, Jono. Yeah, no, uh, in uh, fantastic in printer. in Hoban, uh, and I went in there to um, uh, just look at some retouching that Glenn had done for a picture, and I met yeah. Craig in there, and we got on really well, and uh, he booked me for a job, right. and the rest is history. Yeah, I yeah, guess because well, that would be what nineteen ninety one, two, three, probably. Right. Oh, okay. Cause it was just after he left me. Yeah. Craig was my assistant. Um, yeah, yeah, this asymmetric orange hairstyle <laughs> that I had to change. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So um, he started working around then, and also Pat McGrath. Yes. So did you know Pat, or did Craig know Pat? I, I knew Pat before Craig knew Pat, I think, um, because I used to do a lot of music work and videos. Yeah. Uh, and he was talking to me about you know, who do you want to work with? And I just thought, I just want to work with Pat. She's like really amazing. Yeah. Um, and she's hysterical yeah. uh, and she's brilliant. And we, I think we did a shoot for ID, yeah. ID magazine yeah. back in the day. And the thing that I, cause I said Craig had just recently left me to start his own career. And he seemed to be completely faithful to you and Pat for the first how many years do you think you worked? Twelve. Right. <laughs> like so, really faithful. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I haven't ever come across a relationship like that 
you know, since, or, or you know, there's very few examples of a photographer sticking so, when he's first starting out, oh, yeah. to two, you know, to a hairdresser and makeup artist, consistently sort of rebooking yeah, and insisting. I, that I, I, th I think that that was um, uh, a very different, I think it was a very different time back yeah. then, but I think, um, I think basically, I, I think you kind of probably instilled a lot of, um, you educated them in a really great way because I think you took a lot from uh, how how you worked because you always worked with a team yeah. that you knew and you were very faithful to your team. So I, I think um, from a moral standpoint of view, he was really faithful because he loved working with us and we loved him as a mate. He was yeah. a friend uh, first and foremost. <laughs> Ooh, but there was there was like um, an amazing synergy between yeah. the three of us. Yeah. I, I, I really felt, and I felt that we were really kind of like supportive of of one another. It really was um, really was a family. Yeah, because he he you, you know? Pat and Craig worked on Jill Sander, yeah, on Yoji, and all the big clients, um, and then sort of went on to the magazines and American uh -huh. Vogue and everything else. And basically, the three of you went from you know being kind of unknown in London, mm -hmm. and, you know, worse unknown in London, um, right up to working you know the best hairdresser, the best makeup artist, the best photographer in the world, which is quite an ascent. Um, yeah, but you know what though? I think the really funny thing is, I think we were kind of we were we were really so into what we were doing. I yeah. don't really think that um, we ever sat down and really thought about what we did in that way. No, no, I'm sure we didn't. You know. From the outside, it's an, an interesting, a very interesting um, story because you, know, you have these. We were three strange, people. strange triplets, yeah. weren't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess so, but I, I, I think the, 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 the thing was we were. I think we're still really very excitable about what we do, mm. uh, and I think that there was definitely a very strong chemist. Well, I know that there was a very strong chemistry there. Um, yeah. You know, and and I think we. Generally, we really kind of worked with a lot of lot of synergy. Like for for instance, you know, like some days I would I'd, I'd go into work and you know Pat and me would be on the phone for like three or four days beforehand trying to work out yeah. you know where 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 we were, what we were going to do. What do you think about this, Pat? Oh, I think you should kind of go down that road. And I'd be like, yeah. What do you think of this, Eugene? You know. Yeah. You know, please don't spray the roots black. It's going to stain her forehead. You know, yeah. stuff like that. We, so there was you know, a lot we, of kind of yeah. There was a lot. Of, there was a, there was a lot of communication, and I think we really took an idea, and we really enjoyed evolving this idea. And and for me, and, and today, it's still, I still feel very much like this. I, I have to like really enjoy the process. Yeah, like the process for me is almost <coughs> the most important part. Right, actually being with people, yeah, creating something together. That's yeah. the most important thing for me, and I love the images afterwards, obviously. But I'm not one of these people that can kind of go to work and just kind of like turn it on and just do A, B, C. Yeah. You know, I don't think. Um, and I, I think we're all very much like this. I think Craig is definitely like this. I'm definitely like it. And Pat is. That we've, I always feel that you kind of got to please yourself right. first. Yeah. Uh, and be convinced personally about yeah. what you're doing and why you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think we're all, I guess we're all like that, really. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a Today, you know, I think that's who we are. Yeah. I just think it's a very, um, it's very actually a very lovely story and a very, very um, rare story to find people that devoted, and mutually sort of trusting each other. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, mm -hmm. I I've always <coughs> had the attitude in uh, fashion that you know, it's great when you work with people, but of mm -hmm. course they're not always going to be available, and you can't always book them. Blah 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 blah. So you have to treat relationships, which become actually very close with hairdressers and makeup artists. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, it's, 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 it does become a sort of love if you want in some sort of. But you have to take that thing very carefully that you don't get hurt. When those relationships go elsewhere, or you know that sort of thing, and I think it's it's remarkable in any relationship you spend to go for, for twelve sure. years. Sure, I mean, yeah, most most definitely. But um, you know as well as I know that um, you know uh, people live in different parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people have families. Like I have a family. I have yeah. two daughters and a wife. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm obviously not going to be available all the time. Yeah. But uh, 
if you call me up right mm. and talk to me about yeah. something you really need or there's a job that you want me for right? yeah. of course i'll yeah. you know go there and that's the kind of relationship that i have with craig yeah